Open University geologists Tom Argles and Claire Warren travelled to Bhutan in May 2010 on the search for elusive rocks which they hoped would hold the key to the tectonic history of the eastern Himalayas. They trekked far off the beaten track to the rugged high altitude region of Laya in the northwest of the country. This is the story of the highlights and lowlights of their trip. Hi, I'm Tom Argles. I've been a lecturer at the Department of the Earth and Environmental Sciences at the Open University for about 10 years now. I've only visited Bhutan once before, and on that trip we spent most of our time working along the roads, so I've never actually trekked into the north of the country. Although we started our trip in town, we soon left the traffic far behind. Well, I'm walking down the National East-West Highway in Bhutan, more or less the equivalent of their M1. And as you can see, we're having to dodge quite a lot of traffic. All right, it's about half past ten on Friday morning. We've reached the end of the road. Guys, there's a couple of hours trek that way. All our kits behind us there. We've got some horses here. I'm not sure they're ours or not. So uh, let the fun begin. There aren't a lot of roads in Bhutan, and more than half the population live more than a day's walk away from the end of one. Everything they need to survive, apart from what they can grow themselves, has to be carried on foot, by man, horse, or at higher altitude, yak. We're here in the camp in Gaza. We're just about to start the seven hour trek up to our next camp at Koina. And in fact, we're a day late. We spent yesterday here in camp in Gaza because our cook, Nono, fell ill with tonsillitis. So obviously without a cook we couldn't trek up the valley and he had to go down the valley. And the company then sent a replacement cook up very quickly and he arrived yesterday evening in the pouring rain. Luckily the rain stopped overnight, so after our 24 hour enforced acclimatisation at just under 3,000 metres, we managed to get going on the long trek north. Overall, we plan to be trekking for 14 days, up to a maximum altitude of nearly 5,000 metres. At times, we both found the altitude pretty tough. Fantastic scenery. I just wish they'd put some more oxygen in the air. Over the next few days, we settled into a daily routine of slogging up the steep valley sides and trying not to fall down them again with a rucksack full of rocks. Camp life was rustic, but comfortable, and even pumping yak pee out of the river water was a pleasure, given the fabulous scenery around us. On our sixth day, however, we were given some bad news by the camp crew. So it's all been going pretty well so far. We've uh, collected some good rocks, and uh, we've got some good structural information, and it's all beginning to make sense. But then, last night we hit a bit of a snag. Haven't we? Our gas supply is running out, uh, which means that we might have to get down the mountain a couple of days earlier than expected, which puts a bit of a spanner in the works. So um, we're moving from our idyllic campsite here and uh, heading up to Rodofu, which is a two day trek, uh, in the hopes that we can spend as much time up there looking at the rocks and structure up there as possible. Well, here I am at the pass again, just above Koina the um, halfway uh, rest spot between the highland village of Lyre and the lowland village of Gaza. Um, we're here three days earlier than expected because of the lack of gas. Bitterly disappointing because we were just beginning to get to grips with what was going on, uh, geologically speaking, up in the highland area. Um, we had a fabulous day yesterday but then got snowed out and then this morning uh, dawned blue sky and sunshine and absolutely great for doing work and we've just had to trek all the way back down again. The refuge at Koina has everything one needs for a comfortable night's stay. A roof, a kitchen, an outhouse, a tap, no running water mind you. And so we spent our last night up country. It um, rained a lot last night and it's still pretty drizzly this morning so it's uh, not a great start to the last day of trekking. Um, also, the rain woke me up last night and I also heard the pitter-patter of little scratchy feet in our room. 
So uh, I'm not sure what animals they were, but I really didn't want them crawling over me in the middle of the night. Uh, lastly, to, to top off this fantastic morning, two of the horses have run away, so uh, we're now having to rearrange the luggage so that nine horses can carry it instead of 11. Um, yeah, welcome to another day in Bhutan. Unfortunately, our last full day of trekking was a little on the damp side. It's about five o'clock in the evening. It's been raining solidly since 11 o'clock this morning. We've made it to Gaza along with the entire midge population of the world. The only thing that's made today good is getting back to the land of hit beer. And by and large we've been very very lucky with the weather. This is the first time I think that we will have had to pack up our tents wet. But this is quite unseasonal and, and we think maybe this is just the start, the first sort of inkling of the monsoon in Gaza. And we're quite lucky to have got our trip in before the monsoon really starts. It's a horrible job in the rain. It kept raining all day and because the car picking us up at the roadhead couldn't get there until the following day, we headed down to the river to enjoy the famous hot springs. The main infrastructure was washed away in a big flood in May 2009, so instead of a roofed complex there is now just a single pool dug into the gravel and covered over in tarpaulin. We've reached Gaza Hot Springs. I'm very excited. It's my first wash in about 10 days, as you can see from the illustrious quality of my hair. Um, and also these hot springs have curative properties, so I'm hoping they can cure the 103 midge bites around my ankles. Claire has very kindly volunteered to let me go first and test the temperature of the water. So here I go. With the work in the highlands cut short, we turned our attention to the rocks we could find along the roads. However, neither the rocks nor the working conditions were as nice as at higher altitudes. Apart from the uh, occasional stinking truck, there are other problems with working along the roadside in Bhutan, and that is that every place where you think you find a nice little bit of exposure just off the road, it's always been used as a toilet many times. Actually very unpleasant. <laughs> With the trip nearly over, it's time for reflection. The best bit about this trip for me was the bits where the weather was really fantastic and we had great views, um, especially up in the Rodofu Valley. Uh, there was one moment when it had been raining, then the sky cleared, we did some jumping photos, then the sky closed back in again. But just for that brief five minutes was absolutely beautiful. I was quite apprehensive about the trekking side of this trip before it began uh, because I hadn't done much training and I didn't know how fit I was. And in fact it was pretty tough, certainly once we'd trekked up beyond Gaza and Koina up to the, the sort of level of about 4,000, you found there really wasn't enough oxygen around. The worst bits of the trip for me were the disappointments with somebody's um, uh, lack of uh, gas planning and also the animals, the leeches, the midges, the mosquitoes and the ticks that seem to like my ankle bones uh, is this by far the best bit of me of course um, and they were so itchy for days and days and days. So I've got three recommendations if you're coming to Bhutan. The first would be to bring binoculars. The second one would be an umbrella which I did not bring. And the third one would be to tuck your socks, uh, trousers into your socks um, to prevent any of the local wildlife like ticks and leeches and so on making a meal of your ankles. It's not fashionable, but it works. Ready? <laughs> If you would like more information about Himalayan geology, our research projects, or available PhD studentships, 
please contact us at the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences at the Open University.